Hello, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural live recording of Mavericks All Access. I'm your host today, Anna Bellinghausen. Our first two guests up here, Nolan Sullivan, Matt Miller. Thank you guys so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having us out. Thank you. Nolan, I'll start with you wearing the C this season for the hockey team, the captain. What does that honor mean to you? Yeah, it's definitely a big honor just to be able to wear the C. It's something I uh, dreamed of since I got here freshman year. And so it's fun to have Matt and Randy by my side, uh, along with me, two of my best friends on the team. And it's uh, just a really great group to lead, hard workers. Matt, your junior season, you're wearing the A assistant captain for this hockey team. How about you? What does that mean? Yeah, just like Sully said, we have a great group of leaders and a great staff here. And so it's an honor to serve as an assistant captain and uh, set the culture with Sully and the other and Jack. It's a lot of new faces on this team, obviously 12 newcomers. It's a big adjustment for you guys. How do you approach the season, especially in that leadership role? Yeah, I think it started in the summer, just trying to get um, the guys up to speed right away. Um, like you said, it's a lot of new guys just trying to get used to Omaha and uh, coming back into college after being away for a few years. So for us, there's a lot of team bonding over the summer, uh, making sure guys felt comfortable uh, in the team, getting to know the older guys, uh, just being comfortable asking those questions and uh, just we trained really hard over the summer. So I think getting those guys in and uh, used to the uh, pace of play really helped them just to adapt to the style. How important are those bonds to create success on the ice? Not only obviously off the ice as well, but translating onto that success of just how well you guys know each other. Obviously, like I mentioned, lots of new faces. Yeah, I think it's huge. It's uh, a lot of those little things that some teams might overlook, uh, but there's a reason we get here in July and it's uh, it's never easy. It's long summers at times, but that's when you build the most bonds. And I think it paid off uh, definitely against Mankato. And I know it's going to pay off here down the road as well. Yeah, the closeness off the group or off the ice really shows on the ice as well. So, yeah, just having a good culture, a good group of guys, that's really important. For sure. And for this fan base that might not know the younger guys on this team, you guys are some veterans. What have you seen out of the new faces? Yeah, I think they're just consistent in their uh, effort at their rank. There's guys that come in early in the morning and they stay late at night too. So it's been incredibly impressive to not really have to push them to show the extra work you have to put in to have success at this level, but they've really taken the program to a new level by just their consistency and the way they come and just show up every day with a, just a hardworking effort. And so it's been impressive, I think, for uh, the leadership core to watch. And I think it's actually pushed some of our older guys to work just as hard. That's what I was going to say with the experience this team has on the veteran side as well, the juniors and seniors on this team. How much more important does it make it to make sure those freshmen are comfortable in their roles? Yeah, I mean, uh, the older guys set a great example for the younger guys as well. And I mean, bring them right in, um, get them acclimated to the, the facilities, the school, and then the honest stuff takes care of itself with their hard work. So, yeah, the, everybody's done a great job so far. Let's talk this season. So you guys took down number three, Minnesota State. That was an exhibition. You had a tough first home series against Niagara. Where does this team want to really grow in their areas? Yeah, I think it goes back to just playing to our identity. I think it's easy to get up for those big games and then almost overlook teams at a time. And you find out pretty quickly that you can't do that. And so whether it's in conference or out of conference, at the end of the day, we got to play Omaha hockey. And I think we got away from that a bit last weekend. Um, you know, we played hard, but if you take five minutes off in a night, you can end up losing four or three like we did. So uh, I think it's a good learning lesson for the group. We talked about this, how it could be a really good thing in the long haul. Um, so we're going to look at it as, as a positive here. And we just got back to work on, on Monday and this week. So we're looking forward to seeing that hard work pay off this weekend. I think one of the special things about Omaha hockey is just the culture. This is Omaha hockey. People that don't know, what is that culture? Yeah, I think it's a lunch pill attitude. It's the, the picking it up on Monday after a, a tough sweep on the weekend and going back to work. It's not not easy to do. A lot of teams say it. You can go back to the rink and lap it. At the end of the day, we come back ready to uh, make improvements, whether we win or lose. After Mankato, it's the same thing. We didn't uh, lighten up just because we had a big win, and we didn't lighten up because we had some tough losses. We were just consistent in the way we approach our day-to-day -day work, and I think that shows in our consistency on the ice. Matt, anything to add on that? Yeah, like you said, consistent. Just the consistent effort, consistent grit. So always having that learning attitude. So yeah, everybody shows up to the rink ready to work every day, which is awesome. You guys have a sign outside the tunnel that says, today matters. What's the story behind that sign and what does that really mean to you guys and your identity? Yeah, I think just the importance of uh, you can't overlook any single day. I think each day you have the chance to get that 1% better. And I think for Omaha as a whole, that's what we're looking for. How do we separate ourselves from... Uh, some of these other teams, obviously, it's a great conference. For, so you're looking for the advantage any way you can get it. And so for us, it leans into our core values and it really sums up 
all of our core values under that title of today matters and not looking over the daily process. It's easy to think long term, like we want home ice advantage, we want to win a pen rose, we want to win the national tournament or get back to the tournament. But at the end of the day, if you don't focus on those daily habits, you're not going to put yourself in a spot to succeed in those situations. Well said, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of excitement for the season ahead. What are those percentages to get better? What do you think the main focus needs to be for this team? Yeah, it's a great question. I don't think it's necessarily one thing. We talk about kind of playing in a flow state. I think when you have a lot of new guys on the team, it's easy to overthink the systems and uh, even mistakes. If you make a mistake out there, like we did at times over the weekend, it's like how long are you going to dwell on that mistake compared to just next shift mentality, next effort. And so I think for us, it's just getting guys to know that off the ice, taking the time to work hard and allow those guys to ask questions too, whether it's with coaches or uh, having us as leaders take five minutes to talk to the freshmen and say, hey, what do you need clarity on? Um, I think the more we can do that, the more success is going to be on the ice because you don't have to think about it as much. It just kind of comes naturally. You guys have lots of experience combined together. And Matt, you started at UNO during an odd season. You had that 2020, the NCHC pod. Does anyone remember that? When that <laughs> happened at Baxter Arena, that was pretty crazy. Matt, what have you learned most about yourself through this whole process that uh, you've been a hockey player here at Omaha? Oh, man. I mean, just the con how hard it is to play college hockey and how consistent you have to be. So it really takes a lot of effort and not only just mentally, but physically as well. So just that mental mindset of just staying at it, staying to work. So you got to got to bring it every single day. So that's combining that with school. It's been a lot. But uh, if you're in the right mindset, it's definitely pays off for you. I feel like you've been used to being in that younger role, especially how have you taken on the, the leadership more so this season? Yeah, no, I, I look up to Sully. I don't, <laughs> I don't tell him that much, but yeah, I look up to our other captains and we have a great leadership group and culture and it all starts with them and our staff. So yeah, being, being a little bit younger, I can look up the guys on the team and uh, I appreciate that. So. Hey, speaking of being younger, when did your guys' hockey dreams begin? Where was that first moment where you picked up a stick and knew this is what you wanted to do? I was six years old when I started playing hockey. So a little bit later than some, but. Yeah, uh, I think later I, than some six years old. Yeah, some kids start, <laughs> start skiing when they're three. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I started when I was three. I had a dad that played uh, college at Providence, um, and then two older brothers that played in high school and juniors as well. So I was usually goalie when I was younger. I just kind of get hit in the face and then go cry to mom or something. But uh, I started pretty early. I think it was around three. That's awesome. And then when you look at yourself between when you started freshman year versus right now, what's the biggest difference between both of those people? Uh, I think just the maturity factor of uh, freshman year I felt a little inconsistent and uh, just my full game, 200 foot D zone offensive. It's more well-rounded now. So, Yeah, I would just say it's, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than one person. It's easy to have success and to kind of get a, a big head or think you're the, the top dog. And so it's nice to have times where you get humbled a bit too, and you can learn uh, honestly more from those moments than you do from some of the success. So it really teaches you just to be consistent and kind of steadfast and uh, the approach kind of like we talked about with the today matters. Coach Gabs is sitting over there, a guy that's been instrumental in your, he waves over here. He's listening, so <laughs> keep that in mind. But what has Coach Gabs meant to your guys' career and what you've learned from him? He has a lot of hockey experience. We'll get into it when we speak to Coach Gabs, but what has he meant? He's been an awesome coach. I mean, he carries himself more professional than our team. I mean, he looks up, we look up to him and the way he eats and carries himself. So we have meetings every day about mindset and uh, us players really take a lot from that and look up to him. Yeah, I would add just a, a great hockey mind and uh, the guy that looks in the mirror first before even addressing the group. I think it's easy to kind of point the finger, especially like last week and when something doesn't go our way, it's easy to say, well, our guys didn't execute this or this and I think for him, it was first take a look in the mirror and see what he wants to improve on. And so I think that's very, um, it makes for an easy leader to follow because it makes you want to do the same thing. So that's something that I've seen over my four years and uh, just makes it kind of an honor and privilege to play under him. Matt, you talked a little bit about mindset. How important is that? And just understanding and having that balance of being a student and being an athlete as well. Speak to that. Yeah, I know. At the, at the rink, we talk about the 1%. So every day, just try and get that 1% better, no matter what you're going through. Just that consistent effort showing up and that 1%, everybody, it ultimately adds up to our team goals at the end of the year. So yeah, that mindset's huge. How about you, for you, Nolan, for balancing being a student athlete, as well as, you know, trying to give your best on the ice every single night? What's, what's that 
balance like? Yeah, I think it just comes down to time management. Um, you know, it's nice the way, honestly, with COVID happening, it gave you a little more flexibility with some online options as well. Mm -hmm. So kind of balancing between in-person, online, and then just having a good schedule. I think the more discipline you can be with your schedule and getting stuff done earlier in the week, especially on a week like this where we take off Thursday and get back uh, late Saturday night, um, you know, the more you can get done Monday through Wednesday, I found to be very beneficial in that balance. First road series this weekend. What's the excitement level for you guys to get back out there and play? I think it's really, we're really excited. I think anytime you have a weekend like last week and you're just excited to get to that next game there. And so uh, I know the guys have had a great week of practice. I think we've talked through the mentality of what we want that to look like and mm -hmm. um, really just took it head on for what it was last weekend, learned from some of those mistakes. And uh, I know we're all just excited to get on the road and to have another opportunity to compete. Matt, for you, what are you most excited about for this uh, this series? Yeah, no, I'm really excited for our young guys' first uh, road weekend. There's a lot of excitement in the room packing up the bus and stuff. So really looking forward to it with the guys. Love it. It's also a special day at UNO where Black Give Back, where you can um, donate to the athletic program, donate to various clubs as well. What does Wear Black Give Back mean to you guys and people that support Omaha Hockey? I mean, look at everybody in this room coming out and supporting yeah, no, it's just a testament to our fans and just how well supported we are in Omaha. Uh, just as a community and as a whole, people care um, not only about you as a hockey player, but about you as a person. I think the same goes with the school, whether it's our faculty and um, just different people we have in our lives. We're very lucky, obviously, to have the coaching staff we do, but there's so many people behind the scenes that you don't get to see, whether it's Lindsay or Christy or some of these people that um, advise us to make sure we're on track with school as well. Um, so there's just so many thank yous to go around. And I think this is a great way to represent that and just to see all the support from the fans too. It's just uh, something very special to be a part of. Yeah, we're very fortunate as student athletes at Omaha. We have a great community, great fan base around us. And uh, a lot of people give a lot so we can have an awesome experience playing sports here. So it means a lot to us. And seeing Baxter Arena full when those NCHC teams come to play, especially North Dakota, what does that mean seeing the fans out there? Yeah, no, it was awesome. I think uh, these first three games at home was very, very impressive. And I think it's the page is turning, you know, you have those few weird years with COVID and people not necessarily on campus or involved. So I think getting back to a bit of what looks like new normal uh, has been awesome. And it just means so much to us to have that support and to see a packed student section and a packed Baxter. I know it really helps us motivated to be motivated to play better and to have more success on the ice. So we can't say enough great things about the support from the students and fans so far. Last question for you guys. We talked about it being a student athlete is not easy ever. What keeps you guys coming back to the ice every single day? For me, it's the group of guys and the culture that we have in the room. I mean, I love the guys. Uh, obviously, school is a huge part of it, too. Uh, we have great professors, great classes, and an awesome education system here. But then seeing the guys at the rink every day, hanging out with the staff and players on the team, I mean, that's just what makes hockey so awesome. Yeah, I think it's just taking a step back to look at how lucky you are. You know, it's really easy to take it for granted or to get stuck in that day-to-day -day process when things do get busy, whether it be school or travel and whatnot. So even during those hard times, it's just remembering how special it is that you have this opportunity to be a division one athlete and what that means, having that platform, whether it's helping out in the community or um, at school, or like I said, just being great teammates and getting to spend those times building memories um, with this group. So, um, you know, with so many new guys, we're excited to get on the road trip and just continue building those bonds and, and growing this program in the right direction. Well, guys, thanks so much. We'll bring up Co Coach Gabs in a few minutes. We'll get a little bit of a break. You guys can hang out over there, take some pictures with fans that want to talk to these guys. Matt Miller, Nolan Sullivan, thank you guys so much. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Welcome back to Mavericks All Access again. I'm Anna Bellinghausen. I'll be your host throughout this duration. Now we have Coach Gabs up here. You've been at the helm for six years. Can you believe it? Time flies. Time, time flies fast, that's for sure. For sure. And... Let's start out with just this partnership between Omaha Athletics and Herd At. What does it mean seeing these fans come out, seeing all the support, not even at Baxter Arena yet, but still just to, just to hear you guys talk and uh, get, get excited for the season? Yeah, it's always always so pleasantly, you know, so pleasantly surprised with our fan base here, whether it's at the Baxter, like you said, or events like this. Really want to thank everybody for coming out. It's, it's great to see that support. I think that's one of the reasons Omaha is a special community. You know, we don't have those pro teams really support our college athletics and it makes it a real special play to to coach and play here like i mentioned your sixth year at the helm at omaha you're the first former omaha player to become head coach what does this job mean to you yeah like i said just omaha in general has always been a place i've loved i got to come here as an 18 year old young man play four years here and then i spent my summers 
when I was playing professional hockey, coming back here to train in the summer for uh, maybe when I was till I was about 28 years old. So always loved my time in Omaha. And then when I get a, got a chance to come back here with my family to to coach at my alma mater was kind of a no-brainer for our for our family. So just again, fell in love with the community when I was a player. Um, love it even more now that I'm raising a family here and couldn't be more happy to be in Omaha. Have to give a shout out to the legendary coach Mike Kemp over there. What has he meant to your hockey career? Uh, again, he's I don't know about legendary. We don't want uh, <laughs> we don't want uh, some Hall of uh, Fame okay, say so. Okay, uh, just kidding, coach. Uh, but just right there, right? He's uh, you know went from a coach to kind of a mentor and obviously a friend. Um, now that I'm over forty, we can be friends. So uh, <laughs> so it's uh, no, he's been tremendous. He's why I came to Omaha. He recruited me to come to Omaha here and and was a big reason I enjoyed my time here so much as a student athlete. And we still reminisce a little bit just about some of our road trips as him as a coach and myself as a player and just what those meant to myself as a student athlete. And now we're trying to recreate that for our athletes here. And obviously I wouldn't be in Omaha without Mike Kemp. So lots of gratitude towards him and his family. And uh, yeah, he's a special man and a special place uh, in the program's history. When you reminisce back on what Omaha hockey used to be back when you played in the 90s till right now at Baxter Arena with thousands of fans, would you believe it back then that it would have grown this much? Yeah, and again, I think it's pretty neat. I think back when the program first started, we had such a you know great atmosphere at the Civic Auditorium. And I think that was always a, a dream of Coach Kemp's and the department to recreate that Civic Auditorium in which we were able to do at Baxter Arena, and not only for hockey, but for, for basketball and volleyball as well. So just to have that a little bit more of a you know 8,000 seat arena so we can pack that place and create a good environment for everybody. Um, I think it's really coming along and it's a special place to play games at. Coach, you've been through a lot with Omaha, a rebuild to an NCAA regional appearance. What have you learned about yourself most as a coach through all these experiences? Yeah, I think it's just really important. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, uh, you know, whether you're coaching or an athlete and especially with the conference we play in, you know, you're facing top five, top 10 teams on a consistent basis. So it's cliche, but you have to stick with that process. You have to have kind of that, as our guys said earlier, that today matters mindset and really focus on how are you being productive today? How are you being productive today and putting yourself in the best opportunity for success down the road? 12 newcomers on this team. We spoke to Matt and Nolan earlier. How do you approach the season maybe a little bit differently than those in the past when you've had those veteran leaders? Well, I think it's important every year to reestablish your culture and making sure you're, you're doing the things necessary to make sure the expectations are clear and, and what you want to get out of your program. But I think we're in a real special spot. You got a taste of our leadership group that we have here this year, very special young men. And so now to have 12 new faces, experiencing those guys every day and seeing how they operate and, and their daily habits and routines, I think it's a really positive. And again, some new, new fresh faces here too. Uh, we knew we'd lose a lot of guys with all those guys coming back last year from COVID and, and losing a couple of juniors to NHL contracts. So we knew we'd have a lot of guys coming in here, but I think it's also exciting. Uh, lots to learn, but uh, lots of great energy as well. You still return a lot of experience with the captains we spoke to, Tyler Weiss, Johnny Tyconic, just to name a few. How have you seen them grow in their leadership? Yeah, and I think that's one of the most rewarding, rewarding, rewarding things to see as a coach is when you see your players grow and just from year to year, their maturity both on the ice um, with their play and, and their mental capacity and things, but off the ice as well with the way they handle themselves and deal with personal responsibility and and just to see them grow. So it's always, to me, that's one of the most rewarding things to see uh, as your athletes grow and develop. We've talked a lot about team culture with the guys, and I know you talk about it with your team so much and try to hammer at home. What is that culture to you, and how has that stayed the same since you played and since Coach Kemp really instilled that? Yeah, and again, just to, to speak about Coach Kemp, he did such a good job just establishing what he wants, not only on the ice, but off the ice. And I think that's really important. As I know Adrian here now believes in that, right? We want to represent the community. We want to be a representation of Omaha, of Nebraska. Uh, what are the people of Nebraska value? What do they represent? And we want to display that in our program. So, you know, that's hard work, that's commitment, that's compete. Uh, but that's also being responsible and good people off, off the ice in our situation. So. Uh, starting with Coach Kemp, uh, continue with Adrian and, and myself, obviously, with our hockey program. We take that stuff very seriously, and uh, I think our guys do a very good job of role modeling how we want to be perceived as student athletes. This Omaha team has gone to a Frozen Four before, gone to the NCAA tournament. What do you think is the ceiling for this, this team and this program? Where do you want to see it go? 
Yeah, I think there is no ceiling. I think we have everything we need right here to do it. And it's an exciting time in our athletic department. And just to, just to share with the fans, just, you know, all the people we have in place now in our department is pretty exciting. And uh, as uh, Mike West says, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we need some time to really get those things, foundational pieces in place. But I think you even saw it from opening weekend here, just the effort that everybody's putting in to make that fan engagement, uh, make that a game day experience really special, not only for athletes, but the fans. Um, it's really fun direction where everything's heading. I'm excited to uh, to see where it goes. And the start of the season, a tough, obviously, home series to start off, but lots to build off of. Where do you want to see your team grow from here, the first road series to coming back home and then obviously NCH NCHC play as well? Yeah, I think what you mentioned there is just really important is to grow. What's your rate of learning? You know, how do you look this week compared to last week? How do you look today compared to yesterday? And I think really for our young group, that's our focus is that daily growth that daily improvement and, and not looking too far down the road and not looking too far back in the past, whether it was successful or adversity, um, just looking at his opportunities to grow. So I'm, I'm excited. I think we'll really, uh, we're going to surprise some people this season. I'm, I'm optimistic about that. I think we, you know, it'll take some time, but we're working and uh, uh, we're looking forward to getting after here this weekend. In conference play, when you have so many new faces, how do you get guys prepared to play the North Dakotas, Minnesota Duluth, the teams that are always at the top, in the top five, top 10 every single year. How do you get them ready for that? You practice hard, you practice hard. And, and I, don't, I don't mind facing a little adversity early on, to be honest. I think, uh, you know, you grow the quickest through adversity and you learn the most about character and resilience through adversity here. So you got to recreate those situations and practice and, and make it difficult and making sure they're being challenged uh, their comfort zone on a consistent basis in order to prepare for those elite opponents and then work on their mindset. Right? It's not easy when you're facing top teams. Our guys are smart guys. They know that level of ranked opponent coming into the building. So it's our job as uh, coaches to help build their mental resiliency and, and have an elite mindset to be able to uh, face those top opponents. You've coached at so many different levels for a long time, but what's been the one consistent thing throughout every single team you've coached that you've remained strong with every single year? You haven't taught until they've learned. I think it's, uh, I remember when I first got into coaching, I was a, a young coach and I remember calling my dad and saying, man, these guys are no good. Some of these players are no good. And he's like, well, then you're not a very good coach. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, straight up honesty, but, uh, but I, I took it seriously. It was, I was right, right? It's easy to blame, complain, or make excuses on, on why you're not having success. And, and like Sully said before, you got to look in the mirror and making sure you're growing and you're doing everything you can to help these athletes go. And I think, I think great teachers understand that and you haven't taught until they've learned and everybody learns differently, especially nowadays. So it's up to you to find, you know, 22 different ways if that's what it takes, or maybe they don't get it on the fifth time, but they get it on the 15th time. And are you going to stay consistent enough with them and give them enough chance to, to get to that success? And I think that's what makes a great coach. We've talked about it a little bit before, but just what the fan base means to the hockey team and every single athletic team that plays in Baxter arena, how important is that fan base for you and how, how much it's been growing in Omaha. You see, you see the O and the Maverick a lot more out in town right now. Yeah, I think it's great. I think, again, we, we have 60,000 alumni in the city, and I think people are just itching for a reason to raise their hand and said, I went to Omaha, and that's where I went to school, and, and to be proud of it. And I came from Canada and didn't really know any better, so I've always been proud of my school, and I think you can just feel our university building in the community and, and just the passion of our fan base and stuff. So, again, it's a special place, and... We're going to get this thing rocking, and uh, it's going to be fun to see O's and Bulls all over the city. We're a Black Give Back today. We mentioned a little bit before, but it's a giving day for UNO, getting funds for uh, the athletic department, also clubs across UNO. What can the teams do with these funds? How can it grow your program? Yeah, again, with us being in the NCHC, our peers take hockey very seriously. So, man, with some of these donations coming in, we've just able to keep up with our peers and support our student athletes, whether it's nutrition, travel, um, you know, everything that we can do to help them compete at the highest level. Uh, it's been tremendous. So again, we can't thank you guys enough for all your continues to support and allow our student athletes to have access to all those special things. For all the fans here, what can everyone look forward to for the season from what you guys can produce? I know you said you're going to surprise some people. Yeah. Yeah. I think just for me, work ethics, a, a non-negotiable and compete level. I think our teams are going to come out and really compete hard and just continue to learn, continue to learn and grow and look for improvement every single week. And that's what we want to be uh, all season long. Well, thanks so much, Coach. You guys can catch the Mavericks back at home, Alaska Fairbanks, October 21st, 23rd. Make sure to show it at Baxter Arena like you guys are showing out right now at Hill Varsity Club.
Coach Cabinet, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back with women's basketball, men's basketball soon. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Welcome back to Mavericks All Access. Again, I'm your host, Anna Bellinghausen, alongside Coach Gary Banks. Also, Grace Cave. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We got like the whole we, we have whole a starting base. lineup yes, right we have here. Jeez, are we going to play a five-on-five -five game? Like the whole team's here. I love it. Might as love well. to see the support. <laughs> Coach, I'll start with you on just what the spring and summer has meant between recruiting, also putting together a whole new team. Yeah, um, it's it's been really good. We have a lot of new faces, seven to be exact. Um, so uh, just as far as like them coming together uh, and adjusting to each other, I think that's been a really expedited process. They've done a really good job of that. Uh, getting to know each other off the court, I, I feel like they are uh, killing that as well. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. And then Grace, for you, meshing with all of your new teammates, also keep building off that chemistry from last year. Yeah, um, like Coach said, we have seven new faces. So uh, it's been pretty exciting, you know, getting to know everybody. And individually, we have a lot of talent on the team. But um, we, we've so far, we've been meshing pretty well together. I love to hear it. All right, I have to bring up this video that was posted on the <laughs> Omaha yes! Women's Basketball page. <laughs> So it was, I believe it was Coach Hudson in like some sort of wig and some sort of outfit. I don't know. You guys need to tell me this story, but it was Coach Banks' birthday, what, about a month ago? Yes. And yes, yes. there's this awesome video. You need to check it out on Twitter if you haven't seen it yet. Can you tell me, Grace, this is probably a question for you. What, what is the backstory behind that video? I don't know. I just know it's really funny. Um, I, if you want to know who the biggest goofball on the team is, it's Hudson. Yeah. And T. They both, they don't even act like you're not a goofball because you are. <laughs> they, uh, the coaches, they have a lot of fun together. And that, uh, that shows on the court, especially when uh, we come into that first huddle and there's some, it's either Hudson or T or uh, somebody on the team. We're always dancing or we're singing some song. So. So he comes in the video up to Coach Banks' <laughs> office and like surprises her, sings happy birthday. And she's like covering her, fa covering her face like, oh my God, why is this happening? Coach, what were you thinking during that moment? Were you surprised? So my first response was, it's not my birthday. Like <laughs> It wasn't your birthday? It, it was, <laughs> it, was the day it was the next day. But, okay, so there is a little backstory. Um, so there's this character on Martin, and that's who, like, inspired his, his whole wig and song and dance. Um, but my birthday was the next day, but it's also Kennedy's birthday on our team. So I think they were trying to, like, oh, you know, you need your day. Kennedy needs her day, at least. I think that's what they were there trying was someone, to do. So there was, was really like a nice. player in the video as well. It looks like you guys are having like a meeting in your office. Was, was it a setup? Me. Yes, okay, it no, was, it was a setup. And I, what did they say to me? Because I was like, oh, wow, you guys are sitting in here for a long time. It was an off day. And um, I can't remember what they said, but it was just such a distraction. And then here they come down the hall with all these <laughs> little charades They had a cart with stuff. like yeah. food and balloons on it. I love it. So lots of personalities on this team. What have you enjoyed most? Grace, we'll start with you, just being a Maverick. Oh boy, that's a big question. Um, I don't know all of it. I mean, we all, you know, we're teammates, yeah, but we're also friends off the court. Um, outside of it, we all have a lot of memories together. Um, a lot of us went to a haunted house not that long ago. So seeing uh, Brooklyn, our six foot two, scared in a haunted house, it's pretty funny. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that probably my favorite part so far this year is just all the relationships we've built on and off the court. Uh, but we have a really talented and really fun group. Coach Banks? Um, I would say they're just fun to be around. Like, I actually, I enjoy being around them, whether it's in coaching, whether it's off the court. I, I really enjoy their personalities. Um, you know, on the court, in practice, they're competitive. Um, and they can go after each other and practice. And it's not like there's no like res residue from it. You know what I mean? They compete and then they're cool again. So I like that type of environment. It's highly competitive. They get along. We can laugh when somebody does something silly in the middle of practice as well, too. So it's just a really fun group to be around. I think is the best thing. So Coach Hudson needs to show up to practice in his wig is what you're saying? I think so. That would <laughs> that or <laughs> they're or, always trying to read the room, like when we walk in the room and just kind of see what type of mood we're in. So I think that would be pretty fun. Coach, it's your third year here at Omaha. I know culture is big for you. What have you tried to instill in your time here? 
I think uh, the biggest thing is just consistency and how you show up every single day. Um, I think the details uh, in our preparation is really big as well, too. Uh, those would be the really big things. And then, you know, this year we have to have fun. You know what I mean? This group, they get along, they compete. We're very talented. Um, so I just want them to have fun while they're competing as well, too. Speaking of talent, Grace, right here, you're just a sophomore. You were a key part last season, third in scoring on the team. What has been your off-season focus for getting better every single day? Um, so last year, as some of you know, I was pretty inconsistent with staying healthy. I uh, broke a finger, so I was out for a while, and then I was sick all the time. And then uh, summer workouts, I had a leg injury, so I was out. So <clears throat> uh, my biggest thing and my mentality coming back was just controlling what I can control. You know, I can't control if – COVID wants to come back and hang around me again, be my best friend like he was last year. Uh, but, yeah, so con controlling what I can control has been really huge for me. And what does it mean making such an impact on a team? Obviously, you're very young in your career, but you're also from Nebraska playing for the Omaha Mavericks. What does that mean for you? Uh, yeah, it's huge because, you know, coming from a small town, being a small town kid, you know, I you're not really blessed with a lot of opportunities like this. So, uh, yes, I'm taking advantage of it. And I'm very thankful for it. What is it like playing in an arena with seven, 8,000 seats? I think your high school had, what, 103 kids in it? We beat Water, Nebraska? I had 32 kids in my graduating class. Wow. So small, small town. Um, but, you know, coming and playing at Baxter, it's a beautiful facility. And the, we just got a new court. If you haven't seen it, you better come check it out this season, watch us play. But, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's the environment in, it, uh, in Baxter is really cool, too. Coach Banks, what's impressed you most about Grace and the role she's taken on? Um, you know, I think she has been doing a great job of leading this year, um, just in that point guard spot. I think that's really, really important. So I think she's embraced that. Um, I think just her level of focus, attention to detail um, has really increased, which has helped her at that position as well, too. Uh, she's always getting the ball where we need it to go, and that's really, really important for us. So it creates opportunities for other people, and it makes their job easier. So I've just really been impressed with those things, and I think that's just really crucial at the point guard position as well. Talking X's and O's, what do you want to see out of your team most this season? <laughs> What do you consider, hey, this is successfully completing that game plan that I, I put in place the first day we guys, uh, we all walked in? Yeah, I think uh, for any team I've coached, defense has always been something that, you know, uh, we want to hang our hat on, right? So that's a non-negotiable for us is that we're going to be tough on defense. Um, but I really, really uh, want to see the pace of the game for us pick up. And I think we have just a lot of different pieces this year on the perimeter uh, that we can play a lot faster than we have in the past. Um, I think we have a lot of kids that can score in a lot of different ways. So one of our uh, things we talked about early was just sharing the basketball. And I think when we do that, we'll, we'll be really, really hard to stop. And Grace, for you, what does a successful season mean? What do you want to see out of your team? A ring on our finger. There you go. That's, that's it. That's Plain the end and goal. simple. I like it. What do you think it'll take to get there out of this team? Um, like I said, controlling what we can control, um, listening to coach, the coaches, um, putting in extra work. I know we've all been in the gym, you know, shooting extra, uh, doing extra weights, um, taking care of our bodies. But uh, I think uh, if we listen to coach and we can control what we can control, we'll be pretty good. It's no question that this team has faced adversity in seasons before, also making a run in the Summit League tournament, turning some heads with Coach Banks. Uh, what kind of statement can this team make this season in Summit League play? Start with you, Grace. Sorry, what was the question? What kind of... <laughs> she just, I thought you was looking she at She thought her. that one was yeah, for me. I, was, I, I, sat, I, I sat back. Grace. <laughs> yeah, one more time, one more time. I'm listening. Just what kind of statement can this can this team okay, make? Okay, okay, okay. Um, like I said, this team has a lot of talent individually, but uh, I, I think that our biggest talent is when we play together. You know, we all share the ball really well. Um, we got a lot of people who can score the ball when they need to, but like Coach said, you know, playing fast, uh, faster than we have last year and the previous years is going to be pretty crucial uh, in our offense, and um, our defense is pretty solid. So I think – um, this team especially, we have a lot of bright eyes and open hearts, so I'm excited. Coach Banks? Um, I think that uh, if we 
play together. I, I think, uh, you know, the opportunity, the potential is just through the roof. Uh, I think we have a, a great group of kids on our roster. And I think the biggest thing is just going to be trusting in each other and playing together. And I think if we do those things, uh, <laughs> I, the statement, uh, I don't know. I, I think it'll be a, a great year for us. Got a tough non-conference schedule as well. How important is that for you to make those road games tough and get, get your girls prepared for what's ahead in, in the regular season, especially conference? Yeah, I mean, I've always liked to schedule tough in the non-conference because I think the Summit League is really, really competitive in women's basketball. Um, so I think those road games and just going into those uncomfortable environments, which we'll see a lot as well in the Summit League, are going to be really important for our kids just as far as like, uh, you know, winning and executing down the stretch when, you know, maybe you don't see anybody in, in black. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. With a no Hostile ball shirt on in the, in the arena. So, um, no, I, I think that'll do a lot to prepare us. And um, I'm excited, too. Just as competitive as our non-conference schedule is, I think we have, you know, a lot of people that we can surprise in our non-conference as well. So I'm looking forward to to doing that, too. Every single game is obviously important, but are there any marked on both your calendars that you're excited about? November 7th in Lincoln, Nebraska. Please be there. <laughs> and wear Omaha, not Huskers. We need everyone in here wearing black, I think. We can agree on that. Yep, exactly. Yep. Any for I, you? I mean, I have pretty much everybody starred on my, <laughs> on my schedule. Um, but I, I think, are, are there some teams in my mind that I, I'd like to have a little get back at um we'll yeah. spill the tea and they'll know who they are <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we play them they will so yeah i love it uh any specific game plan for this team what's the focus for that november 7th game making sure you know you're at your a game you're at where you want to be in the season yeah i think the biggest thing uh, especially when you open up on the road uh we're obviously a bcs opponent is you know, everything every day we do is about us. It's about us getting 1% better every single day. So just going into that environment, it's going to be a field trip day. It's going to be really wild and crazy and loud and all that stuff is making sure we keep the focus on our team, our strengths and, and what we can do um, and not, you know, saying trying to be someone else. So just being strong in our identity. Grace, biggest thing for you this season that you want to see improvement between your freshman and sophomore year? Um, probably just my consistency on and off the court, you know, being a freshman, it's really intimidating coming in, you know, playing in a different atmosphere and playing with people you never played before. So for me, um, just contrib contributing to the team in any way that I can, you know, being a leader and, uh, just playing my role to the best of my ability. I like to say freshman to sophomore year is probably the biggest jump you make in college, especially in athletics. What kind of leadership role you mentioned a little bit, do you hope to take on for this team? Um, probably just, you know, when we talk about being a good teammate, we talk about always communicating with each other. So being the person who's always going to communicate, um, on and off the floor, you know, if I get taken out of the game, I'm going to be on the bench cheering, you know, going crazy. Um, so probably just, you know, communicating and, uh, leading by example. Coach Banks, third year again at the helm. What are those culture, I know we talked about it before, but what are those biggest pillars for you for a team that you want to see continue on every single day? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is trust in each other. And I always tell them we're tougher together. Uh, so those would be the biggest things. Uh, I think another really, really uh, big thing that we harp on is just loving what you do. And, and you want kids who love being in the gym, who love doing, you know, going through this process of becoming a team together and, you know, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel hard. And October is a really tough month in college basketball because it's, you know, a long month, first of all. But you're going against each other every single day in practice. You don't see another team. And so it's like, oh, it's you guys again. You know what I mean? And, and the practices are long. And, uh, you know, you know every scout because you're going against your teammates. So it can get a little dicey sometimes. Uh, so you, you just have to love it. And you have to be committed to having fun in that process. So, um, just doing that consistency consistently having fun. We've talked about it a lot and it, it seems like there's no, no short amount of that on this team. How important is it just to get to know the players, not as athletes, but as people for you? Uh, I think, I think it's really important. I mean, uh, and obviously you always say, uh, you know, caring about somebody you can, you know, is really important. And that's when you get the most out of them and just getting to know them as well as individuals. Obviously this is a big transition in their life. These four years being away from home, 
Uh, so just kind of finding out what makes them tick as a person and helping them explore all the different things that they're trying to figure out about themselves and what they want for the rest of their lives as well, too. Um, so it's been it's been really, really fun. Um, I think we got a great group and big personalities. And uh, yeah. Chris, what's it been like for you finding some of, I'm sure, your best friends now in college, uh, getting to spend another year with them? Um, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, now with the transfer portal, you know, you can lose some of your best friends, but uh, this group we have, is, is, we're all pretty special together. I also want to talk about women's basketball across the country. You've seen a little bit more of a spotlight on that. Record numbers for TV games as well. Uh, record attendance at arenas for women's basketball just showing out. What does it mean from the women's perspective, the women's sports side, seeing that spotlight shine more on uh, women's athletics? Coach, we'll start with you on that. I, I mean, I think it's amazing. And I think it's encouraging to, you know, young girls who are looking to get involved in sports and saying, hey, there's a place where you can go and play and you can be recognized for your accomplishments. And there's going to be support given uh, for our team. It's, you know, something to get to the tournament and kind of have that following and get that exposure as well, too. So I think it's just great, uh, you know, the support that women are getting in sports now and, um, you know, long overdue as well. Grace, from you, obviously you were a little girl at one point looking up to maybe Sue Bird or whoever. Maybe it was Coach Carrie Banks. Who knows? <laughs> <Whoop>. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> how, how have you seen uh, just the progression of women's sports from when you were a little girl to right now playing in front of thousands at an arena? Yeah, um, I just – the thing with that is, like, when I was growing up, you know, you didn't really ever hear the WNBA. It was always NBA. So they would ask you, who's your favorite basketball player? You would say LeBron James or, you know, whoever. But uh, I think it's gotten a lot better, and there's a lot of growth. So it's pretty exciting, you know, uh, especially as a college athlete, to know that you could possibly, if you're, you know, given the opportunity to take the next step at the next level. So, Yes, all about opportunities and representation as well. Speaking of representation, a lot of Omaha fans out here tonight. What does a fan base mean to you guys, and how do you hope to see them show out this season? Do you want to go? You go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, man, I just I really hope that we can get a lot more people at games. You know, it's it's pretty um, not easy, but it makes it easier to uh, win games when there's people in your corner. You know. Um, I think if we can get more people at some games, then hopefully we can start winning a lot more games. And then if that doesn't happen and we start winning more games, then, then you guys want to show up? I mean, that's cool too. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, when I look back to last year, I think uh, one of our, our best games by attendance was Tennessee State. And I just remember the look on our kids' faces when they came out. And it was a field trip day, so it was you know young kids. But it, regardless, there were people in seats, right? And the looks on their faces when they came out throughout the entire game, there was so much energy. Uh, I think in critical points in that game, uh, it really, you know, was like a, a six person on the court. So, uh, you know, if you think it, it doesn't matter, it, it actually really does. And uh, it just provides a great experience for our student athletes that I think they all deserve. Well, thank you both so much. Make sure you guys come out and support Omaha women's basketball, because like they said, it really does matter your you're cheering and everything. They hear it. They feel it. Thank you guys so much. We'll have men's basketball up next. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you guys. You. Coach Banks, Grace Cave. <laughs> Anna Bellinghausen along with Frankie Fiddler, also first-year head coach, Coach Crutchfield. Can we give Coach, like, a nice Omaha welcome officially? Coach, we'll start with you just about that day you were announced. I know Adrian Dowell is in here as well. You made the selection to bring Coach Crutchfield back to Omaha, his alma mater. What does it mean being back in Omaha, Coach? Well, really, first of all, let me say, this is a great crowd. Thank you guys for coming out. So give yourself a round of yeah. applause, really. For the first time doing this, this is a great crowd. Thank you. I tell you what, it's been unbelievable being back and um, just the welcome that, that we've had from all the people in Omaha and of course, my wife is here. She's from Omaha, so she's back. And uh, uh, it's been great. It's been great to this point. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about this year's team. Uh, and I'm excited just to, just to get a chance to work with these guys and 
just the pride that I have being back in Omaha and, and representing you know, my university. For people that don't know, Coach, you have over 20 years of coaching experience between Power 5 levels, Oregon, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Also have some Summit League experience with Oral Roberts. What do you hope to bring out of all of that to Omaha? Well, just the fact that the experience, the experience factor of being in multiple different conferences, being in been around so many different players. Hopefully the recruiting landscape and experience helps. Uh, I think anytime you come into a situation like this uh, and having experience and having seen mostly 95% of what you're going to see and what you're going to experience is just going to prepare you and also help our team. Frankie, for you, you're a sophomore now. A new coach means new adjustments. How have you guys embraced this change? Um. I think we, I mean, coach has done a great job, um, you know, in practice, giving us what he wants us to do. And we're all just listening and uh, being able to adapt what he wants to do. Frankie, last season for you was remarkable. Scored double figures 19 times last season, two 30-point performances. What allowed you to be so successful last year just around you and your team? Um, I think I just played freely last year. Um, wasn't really worried about um, – what I had to do or what I should have done, just kind of played within myself and uh, did what I, what I could do. And coach, for you, what's been your first impressions of the team that you're coming into with, into with this first season? Well, one of the things I think we're really, really, really athletic. Uh, we have length, we have size. Uh, and I think we can, we can put different lineups on the floor because of our versatility. I mean, you're talking about a guy here who's six, seven, he says six eight. Six eight. That's yeah. a guard. <laughs> you know, and when you can put different lineups on the floor and you have length and you have athleticism, it'll give you a chance to be a really good defensive team. And that's been an area that we've been really, really talking about. Frankie, one part of last season I do want to bring up, of course, you know it's coming, the ESPN debut for you. <laughs> 11-point run yourself. You're on SVP Scott Van Pelt late at night. How cool is it to see that comeback for you up on SportsCenter, something that you probably grew up watching? Oh, it was crazy. Uh, I remember going back to the house. I was just chilling, and then someone texted me. I think it was Kayla. Is Kayla here? No? Well, she texted me. She was like, you're going to be on uh, SVP in 10 minutes. I was like, what? I was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got to get the channel on. My favorite line from it, the fiddler is on the loose. That's the exact phrase he used. Have you heard that a lot since? Uh, I wouldn't say the fiddler is on the loose, but the fiddler for sure. I've heard that a lot. The fiddler? Yeah. Okay. Do you like the nickname? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, if Scott Van Pelt gave you a nickname, you should probably like it, right? Yeah, it's cool. I like it, yeah. <laughs> Well, what does that mean to you, just seeing just that growth from yourself from this season to last season? You get on ESPN, you get all that success, but from the team perspective, what does that mean? Um, like for, for this year? For this year, yeah. Yeah, um, I just think um, going out there, being able to kind of do, do what I did last year and on top of that, do even more, being able to find my teammates open and stuff and hopefully get a lot more wins this year too. And coach, I know the off season has been a big point of emphasis for you, strength training and all of that. What have you tried to focus in on? It's been really a, a variety of everything, really. Every, every aspect that affect the game and that's going to give us a chance to have some success. We've been looking at everything. So it started back in the spring uh, and then it, it led to the summer of really, really trying to get bigger and stronger. And our strength coach, Ray, has done an unbelievable job of uh, – helping our guys do that. I mean, everybody has decreased their body fat and increased their muscle mass. And that was big because we want to be a more physical basketball team. And I think you have to be able to do that to help us defensively. It goes back to that again, but, and we've done that. So that's, that's one of the main things we really, really looked at is just being a more physical team, getting bigger and stronger. And then off the court, just getting to know the guys on the team, what's that process been like for you? It's been great. We spend a lot of time together talking. Like, t he's in my office every day, you know, and they come up to the office automatically. We don't. He's have like, I'm to... in trouble if that happens. <laughs> no, no, it's really been a fun thing because I keep a bowl of candy in my office, so you guys know. <laughs> and um, there's Jolly Ranchers and there's chocolate, and there, it's there for a reason because – They'll come up and they'll stay one piece at least to two pieces to three pieces. 
And before you know it, we having some in-depth conversations over, over some candy and uh, it's been really, really good. Frankie, how about for you getting to know your new teammates also keep meshing with the ones that you've seen last year? Yeah, it's great. Um, we all stay in the, in the dorms at UNO. So that helps a lot. And then uh, the candy in coach's office helps a lot too. <laughs> Do you have any like suggestions for new candy coach to get? He just put some Halloween candy in. So it's got like Reese's and then uh, caramel uh, lollipops. Those are good too. <laughs> so a lot of, a lot of office trips soon. Oh, I, a lot of office trips coming soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, what's been your first impression of coach Crutchfield and what he brings to this team? Uh, he's a great coach. Um, he's got a great mind. Um, I like how he thinks defensively. Um, I think he'll 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 help us succeed this year. And from that day one where you were brought in and introduced to UNO, what was your main point of focus of, hey, this is what I want to get done day one, implementing that culture, or was it implementing those X's and O's right away? Well, the main thing was the culture, and uh, we wanted to make sure we get to know those kids that was in the program and the ones that was coming in. We wanted to make sure – we able to merge those pieces together. And, and it, it's, it's really a delicate situation when you're coming in and you got you no know, five, six, seven returning players and you bring in another seven, eight, including walk-ons. So you got to make sure it's the right chemistry, it's the right mix. And we was really, really, really delicate about the kids that we, that we brought in. So from a personality standpoint, we want to make sure we had the right pieces to, to, to one, have a foundation to build a program on. And, uh, and I thought we did that. How would you describe your ideal co culture for this basketball team? Well, it's a bunch of guys that care about each other, uh, that think less of themselves and more about their teammates, uh, guys that have a competitive spirit and understand what that day-to-day -day spirit is like when you come to practice or when you're in the locker room or when you're in the apartment. You know, you, you must have each other's back. And uh, we, we've done that. And uh, I think our chemistry has been really, really good. Frankie, from a player's perspective, how would you describe that team chemistry and that culture from what you see day to day? Um, I think we're a bunch of tough minded guys like um, we push each other through practice. Um, we never give in on each other. We had boot camp like three weeks ago. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But I just I could look at my teammates and they pick me up and the same for me to them. So I think we're, we're a bunch of tough minded players. Was it a lot of sprints? It was a lot more than that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, preseason polls are out and a lot of people are writing the Mavericks off. But what kind of statement do you think this team can make this year? Well, I don't, I don't know if I can make a statement on what we can do right now. It's, it's hard to say that, but we're motivated. I will tell you that we're highly, highly motivated. And uh, this is a team that understands that we're in the beginning stages of building something that's going to be really, really special here. And uh, they have the right mindset and they're working hard every day. And that's all we can ask right now. And in this beginning of this thing to make sure that they're working hard every day and we're getting better every day. You're building that foundation, but you also want to turn some heads in the summit league. What do you think it'll take to do that? I think one, just being consistent, being consistent, being who we are, uh, understanding what our value is as, as a, as a team and a teammate and guys playing their roles and being the best that they can in their roles. You guys have a lot of chances to do that. Your first non-conference <laughs> game, guys, Kansas. Are you kidding me? Defending national champions. Um, how exciting is that to go play at Allen Fieldhouse? Super exciting. I can't wait to beat them. Um, <laughs> 60, 70 points, Omaha. Yeah, yeah their uh, ring ceremony is going to be... Uh, what's You'll have to called? crash the party, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll happen. Coach, for you, playing at a <laughs> – pat him on the back, yeah. I don't know why Coach doesn't believe in us. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Bill Self? I don't know. Right. We got Coach Crutchfield. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. But looking at the calendar, there's also a lot of other non-conference games. You got Iowa State, Nebraska, Iowa as well. How do you get your guys prepped for those? And what do those mean in the long run for when you hit the conference slate? I think what that does is it puts us in a, in a power five arena and it gives us a chance to compete against the best. But also when we get to summit play, we can go out there and say, hey, 
this crowd is not 15,000, it's not 16,000. So uh, the arenas are, are going to be packed when we go to those places, but it's going to get us prepared, I think, for road games in the summit. So we just want to go in really, in those games, you want to compete and, and stay in the game and fight through adversity. And there's going to be some things that we can learn throughout those non-conference games that I think really is going to help us in summit play. Frank, you got to experience it last year, the tough road conference schedule. What does that do for you and the team in getting you prepped physically? Yeah, um, I mean, when you go and play a bunch of power fives, uh, you're playing a bunch of bigger, stronger players than you, uh, than when you reach into a conference play. So it helps a lot getting those games behind us and then uh, being able to focus on, you know, conference games. And speaking of conference, any games marked on your calendar where you're like, hey, let's get this one going, North Dakota, South Dakota. I know Oral Roberts for you, Coach. There's some history there. Well, I don't have any games marked. I think all of them should be marked because, we're, again, we're trying to build something special. I'm sure Coach Brown might have North Dakota State marked. And uh, we both was at Oral Roberts together. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> they're checked. <laughs> they're checked. Okay. So I'll let him do that. You know, I won't check any of them. Uh, speaking of the foundation you want to build for Omaha basketball to come, what's your you know three-year to five-year outlook on what this program can build? That's a good question. And really, we want to get to a point where we're relevant in the Summit League. We want those teams that in year two, three, four, we want to be like the preseason poll came out the other day. We want to be in the top three in the league every year. Mm -hmm. And that's building the culture, building an ecosystem that our guys uh, understand and, and respect. And, and part of it is winning comes with that. All those teams right now that are in the top of our league have had a tradition of winning. And uh, that's the plan is to, to get this program back to a place where Omaha is proud of it. And I think our league can respect it. Frank, you're only a sophomore, so what an exciting time for you. Where do you hope this team is by senior year? Um, in March Madness, Final Four, uh, <laughs> winning every game we play. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the correct response. Coach? I know. No I know. doubt about it. No <laughs> doubt about it. No doubt. When you look at your team right now and the talent you have, it's all about putting those pieces together, right, Coach? What's step one? What's your phase one of what you want that first few non-conference games to look like for your team? I think one, just to be able to compete. Um, every possession, every minute, compete. Uh, be able to be mentally tough enough to fight through adversity on the road. Uh, even in our home games that we have with Idaho and Ball State, we want to be able to, one, compete and, and, and fight through adversity is the most important thing. Early in the year, when you when you got a new program and new players and returning players, uh, you, you, wanna, you wanna make sure you can do that. That's gotta be the foundation of being able to withstand runs on the road and uh, just being able to be mentally tough and compete, I think. And Frankie, how about the leadership role that you'll be taking on your sophomore year, more so than that freshman year, you're still learning and everything. Now you're a sophomore, got a year under your belt. Yeah, I just think uh, leading like by example this year, um, being the one that my teammates can look to when uh, the times get tough during the game and I can just like settle them down, get get our offense going, get our defense settled and just uh, get everyone calmed down uh, in the game. For sure. And then coach, what are you looking for in those first couple games out of Frankie and those leaders of the team? What makes a good leader at Omaha? Well, and Frankie said it, uh, really just to be able to be a common force for the, for those other guys because he's been in some big games. He's made some big, sh big shots. You know, a call rope has been in some big games. Those guys have played a lot of minutes, and they have experience. So there are some guys that – there's new guys that transferred in, whether it be junior college or high school kids, that they're going to be on the floor, but they hadn't been in Division One games. So Frankie can give them some stability. Uh, he can give them some reassurance. He can give them some confidence uh, that everything's going to be okay. Coach, is your first head coaching job at your alma mater especially. What does it mean to be at the helm and get to create your own team, your own culture, having this opportunity for the first time, really taking control of a whole squad? 
It means a lot. And I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that uh, Adrian has given me. And, um, and I, take, I take it really, really serious that, that, but I also believe in our administration. I believe in this university. I believe in this city. And I really think that we'll, we'll get this thing turned around. And I, I'm looking forward to the season. When you look back from when you were at Omaha till right now, how much of a difference has there been? I mean, probably what a whole other side of campus. No doubt. It's been a major, major change and not just in our campus, but this whole city has changed in the last, how long we've been gone? 20, <laughs> 20 plus years. It's been, it's been a, a lot of change, but it's been great change. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come back here because I think this potential of having a division one basketball team other than creating in this city, there's opportunity, unbelievable opportunity here. Right, and you have Baxter Arena to help no you with doubt. that. And all of these fans out here as well. Frankie, what does it mean playing at Baxter in front of the Maverick faithful? Uh, it, it means a lot. Uh, the Baxter is probably the best arena in the Summit League. Um, and hopefully we can fill it this year and put on a show for, you know, the, the Maverick faithful. <laughs> Talked about a little bit before. Wear black, give back. It's today. It goes until noon tomorrow. It's a chance to give back to the community, especially UNO. What can you guys do with those funds to help you guys compete at those levels that you want to be at and to help maybe with facilities and everything like that? What do those funds help you guys with? I tell you what, our administration has done a great job to this point in their fundraising, but those funds go towards our nutrition. It goes towards helping us with travel. I mean, there's so many things that you need to run a Division One program and do it at the level that, that your peers are doing it at. And uh, you need the funds. You need the funds. And our staff have done an unbelievable job of doing that. And uh, hopefully we can continue to raise more. Frankie, I know you're only a sophomore. You mentioned that plenty of times. But how do you hope to be remembered at Omaha as Frankie Fiddler, the Fiddler? Uh, I think I told uh, Coach Niles this the other day, uh, I want to be uh, the greatest basketball player out of Omaha when it's all said and done. So there we go. Yep. Young Trey Young, coach. He got the attitude for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, uh, uh. If you didn't know, coach, you helped develop Trey Young over yeah. at Oklahoma, also, but he healed. No doubt. Uh, what's it like hearing back from those guys? I know Trey Young gave uh, Omaha basketball a shout out on Twitter, too. Pretty yeah. cool to see that support. It's been great. Uh, we talk all the time. We on, we're, we're texting and talking all the time. So it's fun just to follow those guys. They're getting ready for their season. I think Trey's playing tonight. And uh, Buddy plays tomorrow. So we talk all the time. And it's one of those things where, like, both of those guys had unbelievable confidence and they had a little bit of attitude like this guy got right now. Like they believe they can do anything in the world. So that's, that's a great attitude to have. Keep that. Don't you lose that. I won't. <laughs> You've been instrumental in a lot of player development from a coach's perspective. What takes a player from good to great at the D1 level? Uh, I think confidence goes a long way and uh, putting in the work and they develop their own confidence. But at the same time, I think, we have to give them a platform that that suit where they're at in their games. And um, I think Frankie is looking forward to having a great year because we're going to give them a platform that that's going to give them an opportunity to put the ball in the hole and score a lot of different ways and use his size and his versatility as a score. Frankie, your hometown kid as well. Hometown hero, if you will. What does it mean playing for somewhere you grew up? It means a lot. Um, just a lot of you know old childhood friends and their parents uh, reaching out to me saying you know good game or I'll be at the next game uh, I think it's huge that that I can play in front of the people I used to go to elementary school with last question for both of you when you hear Omaha basketball what words do you want to come to mind in anybody any fans mind Boy. Uh, winning the next Summit League championship every year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach, how about you? Probably winning in tradition. Yeah. You want, we want people to say that. Eventually, that's the goal. Right. Well, it all starts at Kansas, Allen Fieldhouse, ruining the championship parade. Is that right, Frankie? 1-0, 1-0. Good start to the season. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Coach Crutchfield, thank you. Frankie Fiddler. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. <laughs>